And Michael Mann joins us now from State College, Pennsylvania via Skype. Michael Mann, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. You two, five separate investigations um, clear your name. They find you um, guilty of no wrongdoing, two out of Penn State and three separate ones out of the UK. Do you feel uh, fully vindicated? And tell us about uh, your reputation. Do you feel it's intact or has really suffered damage? Well, I, I do feel uh, vindicated. Um, and uh, I think that these various investigations, more than anything else, have exposed the, uh, well, really the malicious um, and uh, dishonest nature of the attacks against me and other climate scientists. Um, I have received much support uh, from my colleagues and uh, from the scientific community in general, uh, various organizations, uh, scientific organizations like AAAS, the American Geophysical Union, um, uh, have written statements um, uh, supporting me, uh, backing me up against the attacks against me. So. Uh, yeah, I do feel like there's a lot of support uh, for me and my other colleagues in, in the climate uh, research community from our colleagues. Well, this must have been quite a time for you during these probes. How did your life change? Were you able to continue your research or did you have to put things on hold in your life and in your work? Well, my days became uh, longer. Uh, so I have found a way to uh, continue to meet my other obligations, which uh, involve teaching and uh, research um, and advising students and postdoctoral researchers and um, in uh, uh, participating in uh, outreach activities aimed at uh, educating the public about our science. Uh, so I've done my best to meet all those other ab obligations while uh, fending off these uh, various uh, false uh, allegations and attacks. Well, after knowing now what you've been through, um, the scientific consensus that you know global warming is happening and that it is induced by human activity, found unchallenged by these emails in question. Uh, anything, though, that you would have done differently knowing the emails would have become public? Well, sure. I, I think you know that any of us, if we thought that our uh, private, informal correspondences uh, with each other were going to be leaked to uh, uh, for all the world to see. Uh, would have been uh, more judicious in choosing every single word that we put in, e in an email. Um, it's unfortunate now that scientists uh, have to basically approach that mode of communication this way now. Um, it will probably, to some extent, slow down the pace of scientific research because scientists are going to spend a lot more time worrying about how they phrase their emails to each other. Right, which which I guess is, uh, is good and bad at the same time. Do you believe this right. vindication is one for all climate uh, scientists under attack since these emails were released? Well, you know, there's been an ongoing, uh, uh, you know, really, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, campaign uh, against uh, climate science for decades now. Much of it uh, funded and uh, supported by uh, fossil fuel special interests. and. There's no doubt in my mind that uh, these, uh, this uh, manufactured uh, so-called climate gate uh, scandal uh, was really um, uh, an effort by professional climate change deniers to distract the public and to distract policymakers uh, about the nature of the problem we face well. with climate change. Uh, it happened uh, uh, right before a very important uh, summit in Copenhagen and as the U.S. Congress was uh, considering new energy legislation. I don't think that was coincidental. And I don't think that these uh, um, special interest groups are going to roll over. Even as the science uh, becomes uh, increasingly uh, clear on this, as it does uh, every day, uh, and uh, even as all of these uh, attacks and allegations are proven to have no merit, um, I believe that, unfortunately, uh, professional climate change denial will probably go on for some time. Uh, some of these individuals were involved in, uh, some of the individuals involved in the climate change denial campaign today uh, were involved in uh, denying that tobacco smoke, uh, tobacco, uh, smoking tobacco products uh, led to cancer. Mm. And uh, some of them are still claiming that today. So, no, I think we'll unfortunately have this sort of contrarianism around uh, for some time to come. Do you believe there are scientists out there who, in good faith, do question the data, disagree about the impact, uh, at least of human activity, or even of the detrimental effects of, of rising temperatures? And uh, do you think research should at least go on into that possibility? 
Well, you know, we should all be skeptics. Skepticism is an important thing. It's an essential thing in science, and all good scientists are indeed skeptics. Um, but skepticism means uh, applying uh, critical thinking to all sides of a problem. It doesn't mean denying overwhelming evidence on one side and cherry-picking weak arguments against the consensus on the other side. And unfortunately, a lot of the individuals who might like to call themselves skeptics when it comes to climate change are nothing of the sort. Um, they're contrarians or deniers. In many cases, um, they're advocates for the fossil fuel industry. Uh, you would be hard-pressed to find a legitimate publishing climate researcher today who would deny that there is a detectable human influence on the climate now. Well, regardless of who they are, they, they did have a, a dramatic effect and even, even impacted, um, this made it to the mainstream, impacted public opinion polls. What do you think is the effect of climate science? Well, you know, this was a, a very, uh, as I said before, a very well-financed, uh, um, well-planned, highly orchestrated uh, attack uh, campaign against climate research, against climate scientists and climate science. Um, and uh, it's part of the, the ongoing professional climate change denial effort. Now, uh, on the other hand, as we're talking about how all of these uh, allegations regarding stolen emails turned out to be false, uh, turned out to be manufactured, uh, there was no controversy after all. As we're talking about this, we are seeing record-breaking temperatures uh, over a large part of the U.S., um, a, a record heat wave in the U.S. that's part of a larger picture of uh, summer temperatures, early summer temperatures uh, that are the warmest on record. Um, which is part of a larger picture of a globe that currently is running uh, warmer than ever before. Uh, we're seeing the highest uh, temperatures averaged over the globe during the past 12 months than any other 12-month period. Uh, we're seeing Arctic sea ice um, on a trajectory to beat the old record uh, set a few years ago of retreat, um, uh, of retreat in the extent of ice that's left in the Arctic, uh, a trend that in a couple decades will result in an ice-free Arctic in the summer, and that has profound implications for uh, humans, uh, for national security, and for uh, living, um, living things and ecosystems. So ironically, as we're having this um, discussion about uh, these trumped-up charges uh, related to personal emails, uh, Mother Nature is telling us that climate change is here and it's for real and it's something that we need to contend with. Which makes this research all, all the more important, I'm sure you believe, uh, to have good faith researchers so virulently attacked and for that to reach uh, public opinion polls. Do you feel, though, that climate science has suffered damage, that it, that it needs to recover and that it can? Uh, I, well, uh, interestingly enough, in some of the recent polls that I've seen, um, uh, there isn't actually that much uh, evidence that climate science uh, has suffered damage. In some of the most recent polls, concern over climate change is as high as it's ever been. Um, and uh, some of the polling that I've seen suggests that any increase in skepticism in past months uh, was related to the unusually cold winter we had in the uh, eastern U.S. and in Europe. So, no, I think um, that science in the end um, and truth, which ultimately is what science is based on and must be based on, uh, will prevail, uh, and despite the well-funded um, and uh, really rather malicious uh, attacks against climate science and climate scientists by professional climate change deniers, I think increasingly uh, it's becoming clear to the public um, that you know, this is a problem we can't deny. Humans are changing the climate. It's something we have to contend with, and hopefully now uh, we can start having a more meaningful conversation about uh, what steps can be taken to deal with this issue. Let me ask you this. Have you felt the same media frenzy now that you've been cleared that you felt when you were the accused? Uh, yeah, but it's a, it's a better sort of frenzy. <laughs> I, bet. I bet it is. Uh, how does somebody like you move forward after this kind of vilification? Well, you know, I um, uh, ironically, um, in the time that I've been uh, under attack by climate change deniers, uh, really over the past several years, um, I've actually published uh, more papers in the peer-reviewed literature 
than I did before. Um, uh, uh, my research program has grown. Um, I'm expanding in terms of the various projects that I'm involved in, which seek to expand the forefront of our uh, scientific understanding. Um, and uh, so, uh, ironically, despite the fact that I'm uh, vilified in certain circles, uh, particularly contrarian, um, sort of uh, contrarian uh, outposts on the internet and, uh, and those who in general are skeptical of uh, scientists anyways, um, I continue to, uh, to enjoy a great uh, degree of productivity and a great deal of support from my right. fellow scientists. Well, so I'm uh, moving forward. All right. Well, that is good to hear. And uh, best of luck with your research going forward. Professor Michael Mann from Penn State, thank you so much for your insights. Thank you. It was a pleasure.